Praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. We thank God. This is our month of February, our Black History Month. Amen. And some say that it's the shortest month in the year. But I don't care how short it is, I'm just glad to see it. Amen. I'm glad that God has allowed us to live in the midst of all that has been happening. Amen. Amen. We thank you that we are here today and that we're able to celebrate such a great month. And I'm quite sure that during this month we will put some emphasis that lives on uh, black history. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. First of all, we thank you for being God. The earth is still the Lord's in the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Thank you, God. Thank you for you. And then and not only just for being God, but thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Then thank you for your son that died a criminal's death on Calvary's cross. In order that we might have life, we might have it more abundantly. Thank you for sending us the helper. Thank you for sending us, Lord, the Holy Spirit in order to dwell among us. Thank you for sending us the prayer, the paraclete, the helper. You blessed us, Lord, and we just want to say thank you this morning. We ask to God that you would go with us now. Be with us in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The text we will embark upon this morning is found in 2 Timothy. That is the second chapter and the 20th verse. Uh, and it reads this way. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's usage and prepared unto good works. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Uh, Sister Linda Johnson is going to come to us with our praise and worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I need everybody wherever you are today, this morning. I need you to get up on your feet. I need you to clap your hands because we came to rest and praise and magnify the name of the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Are you ready to bless the Lord with me? I know you are. I see you. I see you standing. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on and bless the Lord.
is the Lord that is with me. And I know everybody's feeling filled with joy. Amen. And a lot of excitement. Amen. I'm hoping and praying that God will continue to bless us. Amen. As we deal with this pandemic. And I know that you and your family as well. Amen. It's communion time. Amen. And we're going to the Lord. And uh, first of all, we're going to pray for the elements. Father, thank you. Thank you that we can look to the cross at this, this uh, present time. And that the blood of Jesus ran not only down Calvary's hill, but I'm so glad that it ran to our houses. And we can be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning. And God, as we pray to these elements, we just ask that you would just continue to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is so good. Amen. The Bible said, amen. It talks about letting the person examine himself. And so let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of his bread and drink of his cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, even than drinking damnation, not to anyone else, but to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are sick, weak, and for this cause many sleep, believe it or not. Amen. And the Bible said that after uh, Jesus and his disciples gathered together, the Bible said that he took bread and he broke it. He said, take it, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And after the same matter, he took the cup. When he sucks, say, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. For all the, oh, as often as you eat of this cup, excuse me, eat of this bread and drink of this cup, cup you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. May the good Lord bless you. Amen. And now we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we know that there are many prayers out there, that uh, uh, there are many requests that's out there. And there's many things that we can pray, we can pray about. A lot of people are losing their loved ones. We know that all of that. But you have to think about the aftermath and what it leaves, the bereavement, and that that space that says that, you know, not only we're not ready for this, but look how the person died. You know, they died because of the COVID, you understand. And so there was a, uh, I had a message that one of my pastors died uh, last week, you know, and uh, the thing about it is I didn't even know it. But God is able. Amen. We believe that at the end of the raw, and the Dust is seven, and we're going to see the master. The master is going to steal. That is the blessing us. Amen. Amen. Let's remember uh, a lot of our elderly people that are in prayer. Uh, Sister Murphy was uh, diagnosed with cancer, and now she's cancer free. Somebody else say amen. She said, I, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, I can't find, find anything. I can't, I can't see anything. And when she told me about it, in the list, of all that is happening. When I look at the 400 and over 400,000 people that are dead, I say, God, you're still in the miracle working business. And I praise God for that. And I'm going to continue to praise God. Amen. God is not dead. He is still alive. And he's still blessing us. And I thank God for that. We're going to ask uh, Brother um, uh, we, we don't, we're going to ask uh, my brother, would you come and lead us to the throne of grace? Amen. Amen. Brother Sneed.
to you, thanking you for being a God that you look over your people and bless them in, in the midst of whatever they're going through. Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy, for your blessings, for your benefits. We thank you for your power. We thank you for being God that you watch over everything. No matter what's going on, you know what's going on. You allow it what you done. You are still in control. So we thank you, Father, for this time, for this year. We ask you, Father, to, to bless the families that have lost loved ones and they're going through some pain, they're going through some sorrow. But if they just look to you, Lord, and trust you, they will find strength, they will find power, they will find peace. It won't, it, it won't be exactly what they're looking for, but it will be what they need. And we ask your Father that you would just visit them. Be with them, bless them, speak to their hearts. And we pray that they will open their hearts to receive your message, to receive your spirit, to receive your love. We ask your Father God that you will remember uh, Sister Mervyn. Lord, you have blessed her, she's cancer free. We thank you, Father. It wasn't man, it was you. It was you. Father, we thank you. For all the families that are, are, are depending on you, they're depending on you because man can't can't give up what, what they need. It has to come from you. And Father, we just thank you right now for blessing us in our health, in our bodies, in our minds, blessing our families, and we pray that they will have a desire to come to know you for themselves. We ask you, Lord, to visit the sick and shut in. Even those that don't have COVID, Lord, they're still dealing with health issues. We ask you to bless those that are, are, are dealing with uh, uh, school. The young children are having a hard time concentrating, Father. But they need a blessing from you. That their minds will be right. That they can learn, even when the schools are shut down. We ask you, Father, bless the teachers. We know it takes time. It takes patience deal with all these different uh, personalities and egos. But Father, only you can do it. Only you can give us what we need. We ask you, Lord, to bless the doctors and the nurses, all those in the hospitals. Bless them to stay safe where they can go back home to their families. We ask you to bless the patients that own machines too, Father. Lord, let the machine do what they were manufactured to do and not malfunction. We ask you to bless those that work in the labs and in the in the uh, pharmacy uh, uh, pharmaceutical labs. Bless them, Father. That let give them the wisdom, Father. That they know what they're doing, and there have been some side effects from the vaccine that's going around. But Father, we still trust you. Even when we take the shot, Lord, we look to you to bring us through. We look to you, Lord, because over the years. It wasn't nobody but you. Even through the, the hard times, it was still you bringing us through. It was you, Lord, in the good times and bad times, you are still God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our intercessor. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your hand upon us. Correct us in our mistakes that we may be all that you bless us to be. That we will not wander wrong too far from you. But that we will always remember, without you, we have no hope. But we just thank you, Father, for being the God that you are. Uh, this is a uh, 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 Black History Month. And so, please, God, to prepare this. We have a whole lot to be grateful for to our God. Even when over the centuries people have tried to wipe us out. But Lord, you've been so good, we're still here. We're still being blessed. We're still crying. Only because of you, Lord. Only because of your love, your mercy, and your grace. No matter what someone else thinks about us, Lord, you have a better plan. You're the one that created us in your image. You're the one, Lord, that sustained us. So we ask you to just be with us. Be with us in our churches. Be with us in our homes. 
Bless our families that we can come together and spend this time while we're at home. Spend it together learning more about you and trusting you, Lord. Because without you, we don't have no help. We don't have no hope. But you wake us up every day with a purpose. And Father God, we're grateful for that. We're grateful that you have a purpose for us even when someone else don't. So we thank you, Father, that we know, we know who you are and we know who we are. We belong to you, Father. We ask you to bless this service, bless every hearer, that they will draw closer to you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for prayer, we thank you for worship, we thank you, Father, that we can commune with you, no matter what the situation is. So we just thank you, Father, for being a God in this day and time, and we give you praise, God, and glory. In your Son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The song says, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? How many know that if it hadn't been for the Lord on our side, we would be so messed up. Thank God that he was on our side. Paul was in prison. He wrote one letter, then he wrote another letter. 
Amen. But this is a good opportunity to look at the scripture and let's try to get the proper exegete for it. Amen. So God has believers, amen, that has been uh, a part, has been set apart, and has been used, that is, for his work, believe it or not. This is a great opportunity, believe it or not, to cleanse yourself in order that you might be able to be useful, that is, to God and to do his work. Now, Paul gives the analogy of what we call a parable. There are parables, bros, you do know that it's in the Old Testament, just like they're in what? The New Testament, am I right? You Bible readers, am I right? Amen, amen, amen. Now, we can glean something or we can understand some things from this, amen, of what Paul is trying to tell Timothy, amen. Now, there are some folks who name the name of the Lord, amen, and they are part of the local church, the church family where the church meets, amen. But they are not being used of God. They really don't want to be used, that is, of God. Amen. For they're satisfied by doing very, very little work for the kingdom. But here's the scripture that we need to talk about and we need to execute. Amen. Amen. It can be an impact on your life, believe it or not. Amen. And not only that, but if you accept the scripture and walk with it, you can be an example to many people. You really, really can. Why don't we have many examples these days? I don't know why, but I do know one thing. If they would read the word of God, God would bless them. Paul said that we should be living sacrifices. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? What kind of service? Your reasonable. Look at the word now. Reasonable service. Amen. One songwriter said this. And I like the song. I love the song. He said, I give myself away so you can do what? Use me. Not me using you. You ain't using God now. You understand? You, you, oh, you try to use him like a credit card, put him out and holler out about him every night and day. But guess what? You're not using God. He said, so you can use me. Another song where I caught it. And guess what the song said? This is what I love. See, I listen to words of song. Guess what it said? It said, Lord, prepare me to be what? Ooh, to be what, y'all? A sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for who? For yourself? For God. Because, because every gift God gives you, it does what? What does it do? What does it do, y'all? Every gift does what? It has a way of doing what? In doing, you're magnifying the church. You're helping the church. You understand? What you're doing is your gift is for the church. Believe it or not, it is not for you. Amen. You see? Here's another one. This is an old school one. I surrender. Oh, Lord, have mercy. They don't like that one. They don't even say that one no more. They don't even say that one no more. I surrender what? Oh. Oh. Not some. I surrender. And guess what, folks? You can surrender right now. You don't have to wait until later. You understand? All to be uh, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Amen. And so we sing these songs, believe it or not. You see, and there's nothing wrong with singing these beautiful songs. And they have meaning. Amen. But the old Adam said that to the preacher, you need to practice what you preach. You also need to practice what you say. Because I know that the Lord's Spirit is not going to get you in a place. Am I right? That's what you need to do the same thing. Because these words have songs and they have meaning, believe it or not. You see, and we need to sing these songs and mean and know what we sing it. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, and we need to get to that place whereby, amen, we can reflect upon these songs. You understand? You can't just sit, keep these songs for church setting and all of that without reading and accepting the word and accepting the message in the song. And again, we really need to do what? Give ourselves away. So God can use you. You can be used. You don't have to wait for somebody to pay you to do something in the church. Oh, y'all don't hear me. They ain't gonna talk to me today. Amen. You see, are you really giving yourself away? Amen. You see, are you useful for the master? I mean, to the master. You understand? And God uses ordinary people. And sometimes I hear all ordinary people say, Lord. Lord, help me. Y'all have to hear you hear prayers all the time and understand. You see, I'm just an instrument in your hand. Use me. Have y'all heard that before? 
Make me mold me. Oh, God, just use me. You understand? Take my life. But do you mean it? Do you mean it? Do you really mean it? How many of y'all know if you would stop from fucking the church and doing anything they want, they would get mad and go home? They have no gift. They're not being used to God. And I know what I'm talking about, you understand. I hear them crying, I need to out these words all the time, these little phrases all the time to everybody else so they'll make them sound holy and sound spiritually, spiritually, you understand, as one who is connected with God. Amen. And we say that I want to be used of God. But the question is, do you really want to be used and touched and anointed to do his work? His way. Not your way. How many of y'all know? I'm tired of people right out their own job descriptors in church. I want to do this and I want to do that. God wants somebody. Like the songwriter said, I give myself away. I'm going to give everything I got. I'm going to set out. I'm going to give the deep power and hand it over to you so I can be used of you. Y'all want to be used of a man. That's what you want to be used of. He said, I give my, I think that's one of the most beautiful song days in the world. I hum it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the shower, you know what I mean? I hum that stuff. That stuff is good. If you would sing it and know what it is about, you understand. But are you being useful to the master at this present time? It's very important, you understand. Are you committed? That is to God. Are you giving deeply that commitment? You understand? Is what you're doing right now bringing glory to God? Whatever you do and say, he it all all bring glory. That is to God. Am I right? Now let us walk around the text, and I'm gonna go home. I'm, 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 I'm going home for uh, this session anyhow. Now, now it says, but in a great house, in a great house, they are vessels of gold, silver, wood, and of earth. Other words, there's all kinds of vessels. Am I right? Isn't that what it said? Some of them are to honor, and some of them are to dishonor. You understand? But if a man would do what? Clean himself, purge himself, wash himself in the blood of the Lamb. Now you better, you got, you better watch that word clean. If you would clean yourself, he shall be or she shall be a vessel that sanctified, fit, good for the master's uses, and prepared unto and prepared unto every good work. But first of all, you gotta be what? Wash. You gotta be clean. Am I right? You understand? Because God ain't gonna dwell in anybody now. Okay, how you preach? I heard a message I preach. I preach about uh, 15, 20 years. And you used to go to uh, run for me for all of He said, I wasn't thinking about getting no saved. I go in now. He said, I go and hang out with Johnny walking the red after that. Y'all can talk what you want. But you got to be cleansed. You got to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. If you if you uh, uh, do what if you do what confess your sins, God is faithful and just, and He'll forgive you of your sin. Now you go one step further. You do what He wants, a cleanse you from all what sin and unrighteousness. That's the Bible, whether you can accept it or not. Yes. It don't sense if he didn't know no uh, YouTube throwing out rights and stuff. Preach the word. We need to cleanse ourselves. Amen. That's what we need to do. Instead, you'll be meet for what the masters used to say. Too many people can put me on committed. Sometimes you can be committed to death, getting on every committed to come along. You need to do something for the Lord. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Nobody won't be set up in no meeting right now. Folks talking about, I'm going to wear a mask. I'm not going to wear a mask. No, I'm going to wear a mask. Nobody in the You need to do what the word of God said. Now, although uh, the scripture, our scripture, uh, uh, how can I say, likens us to vessels all through the scripture. And vessels were what? Of course, they were what? They were very common in the Bible. There was a decorative uh, a vessel. Am I right? As there is right now. A decorative vessel that had a bouquet of flowers in it. You understand? It's some, it, it had something beautiful in it. Am I right? Vessels. You understand? That were used for different things. 
Am I right? There was a vessel that was used for carrying water. There was another vessel that they were placed by the door of the entrance of your house for doing what the cleansing of your hand and the washing of their feet because they wore sandals and they were walking the dusty roads. Y'all didn't talk to me. There are all kinds of vessels. Just like there's all kinds of people who are serving in churches. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? You see, my kids are just as important as anybody else. If you tell an evangelist in the world, I actually believe my gift is just as important. You mean you sing a song and you actually believe somebody else is just better? Their gift is better than yours? You better keep on singing because I'm sure enough going to keep on preaching. You understand? That's a vessel. You understand? Created for different persons, purposes. Different people, you understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? To serve in different capacities and all of that. Some are vessels of honor, you understand? They're used for honorable things, and some are vessels of dishonor. Those who are used for dishonorable situations, you understand, and purposes. Now, Paul, uh, while he was writing, amen, he was speaking to us, how can I say, of the sovereignty of God concerning our lives. He talked about a part, amen. Amen. A potter that could take clay, if you please, and he could uh, you and I have to use this figure that the potter was making the vessel out of clay, but the potter was doing what forming the vessel, and he had the power to form the vessel into what he wanted it to be. Amen. But the vessel was just as important as any other vessel because we have all kinds of vessels in the house, believe it or not. But God has the power. To make me, mold me, form me into what he wants me to be. Now you may not like me, but as long as God is working on me, work on me, God. Work on me night and day. You understand? You are the part of, and guess what I am? I'm the clay. That's simple, isn't it? Now, you, how many of y'all know that there's actually a vessel for garbage? It's the dumpster right out there on the other side. And when I was a boy, I lived on the farm, believe it or not. You understand? We had what we call a slop bucket for the pee. <laughs> and the bucket was used for what? For, for putting uh, uh, the excess food you didn't want in that bucket. But the bucket was very what? Important. Just as important as that dumpster. Just as important as this. Yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. All of them were very, very important. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see? A vessel to slop the hog. You understand? You see, but the potter has the power to do what? To make it mold that vessel into what he desired. So now, here we speak of God that has his sovereignty. Amen. Now, Paul spoke of a vessel. Amen. That was what? That was so, uh, he spoke of a, 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 a potter that was so what? He was so patient with the vessels. You understand? And these were vessels too that was called vessels of destruction. Destruction. You understand. But God was what? Patient. Patient with those vessels. And God knows how to do what? Prepare those vessels. Sometimes I feel like I'm crap. <laughs> I feel like I'm a crap vessel. And God had to do what? Prepare the crap that's in me. Y'all don't feel that way. No, you don't. Some of y'all feel like y'all on top of the world. You so spiritual. You can speak in this person like I got wife at home, you know, and she knows everything. Some of y'all don't feel that way. Every night, day, I have to go back to God and say, God, I'm cracked. I'm cracked. You still don't understand, do you? I'll be through it a minute. I'll be through it a minute. But you're cracked. And you need to be prepared every night. They also had a, a vessel for water, what they call water waste. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? They had a, a, a where, where there was waste water. They would just pour it in that vessel. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Vessels that was headed for destruction. You understand? You see, unless God does what cleans, prepare, unless He's purifying the vessel. Cleaning it up, you understand. How do y'all know what I'm talking about? Because God said, I got to fix the vessel because my spirit will not dwell. Ooh, my spirit ain't gonna dwell in it. Unless it's right. And unless it's clean. And this vessel should have what? Should have a profound and significant 
impact on the person's life, believe it or not. Especially if you're a person who wants to be used of God. You can sit down and tell young people, that's not the way it goes, baby, if you want to be used of God. You can't do anything you want, go anywhere you want, wear anything you wear. Oh, no, we won't wear. Oh, Lord, I should have said that. But anyhow, you understand, somebody needs to speak and say that if you want to be a vessel of honor, you understand. You see, so that Christians could be used, you understand, you understand for God's purposes. You understand, God said, he's saying all the time, that I set you aside for special usage. Amen. But the degree in which God uses my life will depend heavily on, you understand, if I have what? Lust in me, anger in me, unforgiveness in me, lying in me, Bitterness in me, laziness in me, you understand? Thinking I know everything in me. Y'all better get, we got to get rid of some of the stuff, y'all. We got to get rid of the, some of the stuff so that God can do what? Use us. You understand? So we say, God, cleanse me, wash me, you understand? Wash me with the blood of the Lamb, you understand? And these things, unless you clean, they can block your blessing. They can hinder God's anointing from flowing in your life. And that's what it's doing in America. It's hindering. The church is not about us. The church is supposed to be about God. But he has vessels. Vessels. He has vessels that, that won't go to God and say, God, I'm just an instrument. Use me for special purpose. Special purpose. You understand? I want to fulfill my ministry. I want to fulfill what I'm doing. You understand? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I want to fulfill that. Because I know, I know when I feel your presence and when I don't feel your presence. And when I don't feel your presence, you're not in me. You're not dwelling in me. The anointing. It's not there. I watch people say, you understand? I used to love Frank Williams. Uh, uh, Williams, brother, because he would just stay in one place. Didn't have to move or nothing like that. He would just, yeah, you know, he used to slumped over and just stay in one place. Other folks, they got what they say. They got, <laughs> Y'all ever seen that kind of a... Just let the anointing come. Let the anointing do it. Let God do it. If he doesn't, it, it'll be all right. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Again, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Come on, brother. Come on. And guess what he'll do? He'll cleanse you where you can be meek of the master's uses. Don't you want to be used of God? If you're going to be used of God, then be used of God. The biggest lie you can tell is the one that you tell to yourself. You know you ain't got no anointing on the inside. It's not by my mighty power, but God says it's by my spirit. May God bless you and truly bless you. It's my prayer. Come on, brother.
God, we ask that this blesses me. Need this place, but not to 